Okay, suppose that we know the Laplace transform of the original function f of t is equal to f of s. And we're assuming that the Laplace transform of f of t, it does exist. Let's try to find out what's the Laplace transform of its derivative, all right? And as you can see, we don't have a specific function here, so we're going to come with a formula based off with this fact here. And anyway, I don't know what this is, so we have to go back to the fundamental. That means we have to use the definition. This is the improper integral from 0 to infinity, and we will have e to the negative s t times whatever this is. So we'll put down f prime of t right here, and then of course we'll have the dt. And now, if you would like, you can take care of this infinity here by saying this is equal to the limit as capital N goes to infinity, and then we go from 0 to n now, and then this is e to the negative s t, and then f prime of t dt. And this is cute, all right? Anyway, how can we integrate the product of e to the negative st and f prime of t? It is a product of two things right here inside, right? And your substitution wouldn't work. Well, how about let's try to do integration by parts again? Because we'll be using integration by parts a lot, right? So let's seriously work this out by the integration by parts. And of course, let's do the di method right here, right? So I put this down as the d and then the i, and let's put down a plus and a minus. Okay, in this case, let me ask you guys this. What should I choose to be differentiated? Imagine if I want to differentiate f prime of t right here, I will end up with f double prime of t. That's no good, isn't it? With that being said, let me differentiate e to the negative st, and I will integrate f prime of t. How is that? And check this out. When I differentiate e to the negative st, I will get negative s times e to the negative st. And when I integrate the first derivative, I will just get back to the original f of t. And this is wonderful, isn't it? And now, remember, the product of the diagonal is the first part of the answer already. So let me write that down for you guys, right here. When we do this times that, which is e to the negative s t times f of t, right? This is the first part of the answer already, and we will just go from 0 to n, and this is pretty much it. And we take the limit as n goes to infinity, okay? That's it. And we have the second row right here. The product of each row it is still an integral. So let me just emphasize this right here. The product of this it is still an integral. And check this out. We have negative, negative, so that means it's a plus. And then we have an integral, right? So I'll just put down this is going to be the integral. And because I broke it down into 0 to n already, in fact, it doesn't really matter. I will really just write down 0 to infinity. Should be able to handle this easily, all right? Anyway, this right here is still an integral. And if you like, seriously, it's just 0 to infinity, like this. And I will put down s right here, and then e to the negative s t, and then f of t, and then dt, like that. And I'm not writing down the limit for this one because I've just put on infinity right here. That's all I want you to do. And you'll see why, just because it's more convenient here. All right, so this part, it'll be really nice, you'll see. This part, we have to focus and take care of this first. All right, so to take care of this, what I will do is, this is still the limit as n goes to infinity. I will plug in n into all the t's, right? So here we will have e to the negative s t which becomes n now, and then we will have f of t becomes n now, so that's the first term. And then we'll subtract, plugging 0 into all the t's, so we have e to the negative s times 0, and then plugging 0 here, this times f of 0, like this. And this is the part that we have to work it out carefully. And we will add it with this integral. Right here, allow me to put down the s to the front because we are in the t world. s right here is just a constant. A constant multiple can always go to the front, right? So for this particular s right here, let me just put it down in the front, and we will have the improper integral from 0 
to infinity and then e to the negative s t times f of t and then this is still dt like this all right okay do you recognize what this is yes you should because that's this right here remember the definition of the plus transform of f of t which we wrote it down as f of s but this is the same as saying let me just write it down in red this is the same as saying the improper integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative s t times the original which is the f of t dt isn't it so for this part we know we can just write it down as f of s so that's super nice so let me just put it down right here this is just f of s and then we multiply by this blue s in the front and we still have the plus right here okay and let's just work this out like from right to left because it's easy this way zero times this times that is just zero e to the zero just one and f of zero in fact i don't know what it is because i don't have a specific uh, function for f of t right so for this term here it will just be negative and then we have f of zero like that and now let's see what do we have here because this is just that this part we do have to take the limit when n goes to infinity e to the negative s n f of n right here we wish to be zero right otherwise it wouldn't work out nicely this right here indeed it is equal to uh, zero let me just put it down right here it is equal to zero and the reason is because as you can see we have f of n times e to the negative s n right f because the original right here we have a laplace transform for the original f that means the original f the original function f is of exponential order so let me just write it down right here okay so once again since f of t the original because you do have the laplace transform that means f of t has exponential order okay so since f of t has exponential order that means when you have this times e to the negative s n and we know s will be greater than zero right or technically greater than whichever that exponential order is but we don't need to worry about that small detail this will be zero when you take the limit as n goes to infinity all right that is super nice and at the end what do we have let me just put it down here uh put it down here for or put it down here all right zero minus f of zero and then plus s times f of s let me write this down first so we will have s times f of s and then minus f of zero this right here is how we do the laplace transform of the first derivative and that's it and watch the next video i'll show you guys how to do the laplace transform of the second derivative